Oh, what's going on there, Battlefielders? How you doing? My name is Pwn, and I'm your host for this adventure. Today, we're going to be talking about the patch notes, and uh, prepare your whole butt, guys. It's going to be a long one. So, what's so interesting about this is there is a massive list of things, minor, major fixes across the board. That list can be located down in the description of this video if you want to break it down and go through it. But I will warn you, it is very long, and a lot of it's not really going to impact how you play, just little things. I went ahead and gathered all the most important things and put them together for this video, so sit through and enjoy. We're gonna start off by talking about operations. It's been changed that the attackers have a little bit more freedom to do what they need to do and progress throughout the entire game type. Now, for 64 player, we have increased attacker tickets to 250 from 150, and we increased the tickets regained from killing retreating defenders from 2 to 3. They've also increased the tickets regained for capturing from 30 to 50, and reduced the time it takes to capture flags so that it happens a little faster, all of which trying to progress through the entire game mode, making it a little easier for attackers to get things done for their side of the game. They've also altered 40 player operations along the same lines. They increased the attacker tickets to 200 from 150, and increased the tickets regained from killing retreating defenders from 2 to 3. Also reducing the time it takes to capture flags just like the 64 player operations. Now for Conquest, we only saw one real change, and that was to the Suez map. It pretty much went under the knife. Okay, that's, uh, that's an exaggeration. It more of a touch-up, a makeover, if you will. They added two flags to the map, one for each respective side, and added an armored car to the HQ to allow people to flow around the outskirts of the map, maybe back cap and get out of a spawn trap, which is a smart play. Ultimately, all of these changes were completely ineffective. It really has done nothing for the better of the map. It's still crazy spawn traps, and all the fights still happen and consist within the same three points that they always have. And if by some chance you are pushed back to your home point, one of the new flags, it's generally wide open desert, and it's even harder to fight out of those. So, really? The map is still just as it was before. A few things that I didn't mention, though, that I want to throw out there is now the armored train, when it does come in as your behemoth, has mortars on the front now to attack the flags as a more effective way. And they've reduced the size of the capture points in the inner cities so that people can't just hide in wide open buildings and safely capture them. It's just going to happen a little faster and a little smoother. But like I said, the map still plays just as it did before, and this pretty much did nothing in the end. Moving over to page 6, and this is a really interesting one. If squad leaders ignore requests, it's transferred to another member. This happens a lot. I am so fed up with squad leaders not marking objectives. If another member inside of the squad requests an order and the actual squad leader does not appoint one, it starts a 60 second timer. This timer will run down and it creates a queue. So for example, you, me, and Batman are playing. We're in a squad together and Batman's just being a total Dark Knight douche and does not want to set a point. If I were to request an order and then you were to follow up with a request order as well it creates a line if you will i'm next up in charge so when batman does not set a new objective it goes to me and then if i fail you're next in line and you get it so it can rotate you honestly do not know how excited i am for that change that is huge for me probably my favorite change overall because it's extra point generation and of course a direction for your team to know where to go Last up on this page, a quit button has been added for any time after a game ends. Generally up until now, you've had to wait until the next map starts. This is something that should have been in the game, and they finally tacked on. Moving on, we all knew it was coming. You will soon be able to purchase battle packs from the store, alongside being able to rent your servers come time Wednesday. Battle packs can now drop squad XP boosts. We've known that there's been a boost there, but we've yet to see any of them. So this is going to be really, really cool for us to start scaling up in these higher levels. Because I'm up in 80s, and it's very, very slow to progress up there. So I can't wait to get my hands on some of these. And those actually start dropping right now. We also know that syringe damage now scales with how long it's held down. Up until now, if you just tap it, it did no damage. You would have to wait for the entire thing to fill up, hold it for a few seconds, and then let loose on somebody. So this is kind of a cool change. Another thing that the game really needed is players can no longer switch teams late in a game. If you were about to lose and you wanted to protect your beloved win-loss, you could actually switch at the very last second. It was kind of crazy. There were no restrictions up until now. Squads no longer are auto-locked when joining with less than three players. You may see this a lot when you just come into a server and you see there's a bunch of people with just two or three people in a squad and it's locked for some reason. This isn't necessarily their fault. You had to pretty much open it up and a lot of people did not know about this. And this is a really healthy change. And horses can now take damage from incendiary and gas sources, grenades, so on and so forth. Up until now you may not have known that that did nothing to them. We had some kind of superhuman or Super horse, meta horse, we'll go with meta horse things. Uh, why are we even wearing armor and, and tanks? We just need to gut a couple of those horses and wear those skins around. Get our DiCaprio on. 
So it's really cool to do this, and hopefully we can set them on fire. Not that I'm a sick person or anything, but I can't wait to try to flare gun a horse. It's gonna be awesome. As for the weapon tuning, we have increased LMG and SLR bullet suppression at medium range, making them more effective in those areas, increased aim accuracy of the support machine guns, they've also decreased the Huat and Lewis first shot recoil multiplier, making them more reliable in initiation. They chose to increase the bar M1918 horizontal recoil. More recoil means harder to use, which means this is technically a nerf. They also added bipods to the low weight LMGs, and the low weight LMGs can also gain accuracy faster during fire. The whole thing that's supposed to be unique to the LMG category of support. The Hell Regal has more horizontal recoil and slower overheat time, which means you can spray this for longer durations now, which is a good thing, but more recoil is obviously a bad thing. I do want to note the gameplay you're watching right now is after patch. So. Even though it says more horizontal recoil, it may not be major. You may not even notice a difference because we really don't have honest numbers to go with right now. We have increased capacity of gas and incendiary tripwire bombs to two so that more people use them. And if you do not know, incendiary tripwire bombs are extremely effective. In my opinion, the best ones out there, so I don't know how this is going to go. You may want to test those out. You may like what you see. They've also decreased the damage of the AA against planes. Community, I hold you accountable. So many whiners out there complaining about the damage of the AA. Now, honestly, I don't think it's been too dramatic of a change, but this is the only way that infantry can fight back. There's set plots on the map that planes know about and can target. Infantry can shoot them. They shoot up giant flares in the sky, giving away their position, and they're forced into a mandatory standstill area, vulnerable to everybody. Why you'd want this? It's not that bad, guys. Anyways, now that I'm done yelling at your face holes. Moving over. They increased the damage of K-Bullets against attack planes, and they reduced the headshot damage on cavalry, because why? Why, dice please? Why is this a thing? Cavalry's ridiculous. I fear them more than I do sentry and flame troopers, to be honest. And you don't even get the 200-point bonus when you kill these things. They're moving targets, they're on horses, they're hard to hit in the head in the first place. So they better be wearing some crazy new helmet, because if somehow their fleshy skull is more stronger than my fleshy skull, I'm going to be disappointed in that fact, too. Now, we have increased damage against transport vehicles from hand grenades, too, which is cool. I feel like they're pretty vulnerable in the first place, but whatevs. Last up on my list of goodies, we have changes to the mortars. Mortars now have a time after deployment to be fully accurate. Basically, consider this a charge up time. So you can still use mortars just like you have before, but there's basically two ways to use them now. You can spam them, but if you do this, they're not going to be accurate. They're not going to go exactly where you're looking. And this is not the greatest thing in the world, but if it's a clump of people, they're not far from you, you're in jeopardy, and you just want to spam it and lay them all out, go for it. But if you have time, you can wait between shots, and they will be accurate. This is a very healthy thing for the change of mortars. I'm really happy with this. In addition, you are going to get two smoke mortars for both mortar types. This is going to be great for progression through maps. Objective play, wide open areas in the desert, this is cover. This is a way for you to get through some of the tougher areas in the game, and this is going to be great for objective game types. I'm really happy with that change too. But this, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the patch notes. As I said, there are another hundred things mentioned. If you want to check those out, they are in the description down below. If you found the video useful, be sure to subscribe. Stay a while. We have daily Battlefield content here on this channel. And of course, leave a thumbs up as it helps the video and the channel grow. I love you guys. Let me know down in the comment section what you're most excited for. I can't wait to set horses on fire. As sick as that is, I can't wait to do it. And I'm actually really happy with the squad order change as well. Take care, guys. See you with another Battlefield video tomorrow.